Bible teacher, teacher Jean Rose B. Rabano, and welcome to another episode of fun, learning, and experience as we discuss another topic in technology and livelihood education. Considered as the oldest endeavor in the world. 
Its main goal is to provide accommodation to the guests and give their needs, which includes foods, entertainment, and many others. The hotel industry actually provides income and employment not only to the people, but as well as to the whole country. And going back to our magic word for the day, which is the word hospitality, again, hospitality refers to the service rendered to a guest of a hotel and other related establishments like resorts, travel agencies, restaurants, and other entertainment and relaxation centers. From front office department plays an important role in a hotel establishment. It is actually considered as the face or control center of a hotel. Why? It is because they directly interact with the guests and provides and gives the first impression of what kind of service they could render to the guests. That's why the front office department should ensure that the guests are attended politely and are given necessary needs and services. Traditional front office functions include registration, reservation, room and rate assignment, guest service, room status, maintenance and preparing of the guest account and creation of their history. These functions can be effectively done using the front office service tools, equipment, and paraphernalia. Start up, read, watch, and listen to the sample hotel reservation dialogue that will be played later and join me as we learn the front office services functions and let's see how tools, equipment, and paraphernalia are important into this kind of service. Good morning. Welcome to the Western Hotel. Hi. Good morning. I'd like to make a reservation for this weekend. Do you have any vacancies? Yes, sir. We have several rooms available. And what is the exact date of your arrival? The 24th. How long will you be staying? I'll be staying for two nights. How many people is the reservation for? For two people. Would you like a single room? Yes, please. Great. Would you prefer to have a room with a view of the ocean? Sure. What's the rate for the room? Your room is 1,500 pesos per night. Now, what name will the reservation be listed under? Jack Johnson. Do you spell your last name for me, please? Sure. Johnson. J-O-H-N-S-O-N. Could you tell me your telephone number? Yes. My cell phone number is 0912-3456-789. Great! Now, I'll need your credit card information to reserve the room for you. What type of card is it? Visa. The number is 9876543321. What is the name of the card holder? Jack Johnson. All right, Mr. Johnson. Your reservation has been made. Great! Thank you so much. A pleasure. Have a nice day. About the dialogue in hotel reservation. Did you see how important front office services is? Did you also see the relevance of some of the tools and equipment or paraphernalia that was used during the dialogue? And to continue, front office department cannot function well and provide efficient and effective services to the guests without the use of tools, equipment, and paraphernalia. The use of these materials actually facilitates the services that they can give. And to be guided in this lesson, we need to answer the following questions. Question number one. What are the front office tools, equipment, and paraphernalia? Question number two. Why 
come to maintaining tools, equipment, and paraphernalia important? Question number three. What includes preventive maintenance activity? Question number four. What is the importance of proper storing tools, equipment, and paraphernalia? Question number five. What are the helpful guides in storing tools, equipment, and paraphernalia? And the front office tools, equipment, and paraphernalia include three classifications, just like what I've said. We can classify them into first are the tools, second are the equipment, and third are the paraphernalia. Let's start first with our tools. Our first tool is a... Yes, it's a desk and it's a it's a front desk and it is very important in the department in the hotel because in this is where we make direct contact with the guests. This is where we can place our notebook. This is where we place the logbook where the uh, the guest sign on the transaction, this is where they put their things, their bags while we are talking to them. This is where the telephone sometimes is being placed. So this is just simply a desk where we make interactions between the officer or the front office service, service personnel and the guests themselves. So it's the front desk. Second is Yes, it's a cabinet, but we, we call this specifically as a filing cabinet. From the word file, it is a piece of an office furniture we usually use to store paper documents in file folders. This is where we put the files, we create the history of the guests, wherein do they reserve a uh, few weeks ago, do they have checked in into the hotel a few years ago, or do they have reservations right now, do they have their uh, information already filed in our hotel. So this filing cabinet serves as a place where we store the files that are important not only to the hotel, but at the same time to our guests as well. And the third tool is very good. It is where we place the keys and it's a key or room wrap. Very good. This is where we place the keys for the rooms in a sequential order so that we can get the keys and we will not be confused once we need that keys. And those were actually needed in order for us to arrange the keys in order and everything must be in sequential form. So that is a key or room rack. Okay, so let's have the fourth tool and that is, okay, it looks like a box. Yes, it somehow looks like a vault. And this is, Yes, it's a safety deposit box. And from the word safety, we put things very important inside this box because this is a locked box in a hotel in which we put money, documents, and other valuable items that can be stored. Just like in our house, we also have our safety box where we put our money where we put our jewelries, same as with the hotels. We have our, yes, again, it's a safety deposit box. Next, we have, yes, it's a rack. And this is a reservation or information rack. This is used to collect the reservation slips of the guests which are sent via mail or even by a post. When we say post, this is the mail 
hard, hard copy version because nowadays we have electronic mails we can do reservations via phone calls we can do reservations via messenger via video calls but this post means you have you will be sending a letter or a sort of a hard copy of your request for reservation and it's, it is being placed so that it is being organized according to alphabetical order or even it could be according to the date of transaction or date of reservation and that is what we call as reservation or information rec. Let's move on. Our last tool for front office services tools is the folio tray. Yes, it is a tray where we store and track the folios or the files of the various registered guests who often visit the hotels for future references. Because there are some times that there are some guests who continuously come and visit our hotel. And because of that, we should have a ready record of their names, of their files, so that it will be easier for them. It, it will not be a hassle anymore once they wanted to go and visit to our hotel again. And that is what we call as a folio tray. Before we proceed to the equipment, let us again recap our front office services tools. And again, we have number one, front desk. Number two, filing cabinet. Number three, key or room rack. Number four, safety deposit box. Number five, reservation or information rack. And number six, our folio tray. Again, kindly read and repeat our tools for front office services. What are those six? Very good, very well said. So now I think we are ready to have the front office services equipment. Let's go. For number one equipment, we have the most commonly used and that is Yes, it's a laptop, it's a computer. And as we all know, this is widely used nowadays in every department because it can be used for easier data record management keeping system. Data keeping system, record management system for the purpose of reservation, registration, accounting, and even auditing. It can actually store and even retrieve important data of the guests that are carried out through various services. And sometimes they have their own hotel management software. That's why it's really important that we do have the computer because our computer serves as a storage equipment where we store important information. Even though we already have the hard copies one that is being coded on our folio tray, on our filing cabinet, we still have this computer for a soft copy because we can use this in future references. Number two equipment. Yes, it's a printer. Once you have a computer, it is necessary as well in a hotel that they have the printer. Because once they're already done with the um, information and for them to have the hard copy that will be filed, they could have the printer because it is used to print guest portfolios or to get to print guest folios with the multi-purpose trays that are being put in the hotel which can be um, used once they will be checking out or once they want to uh, return or paid out in their hotel reservations or hotel accommodations as well. So again, it is the printer. The third one, which is widely used is, yes, it's a telephone. Nowadays, most of the people have their own cell phones but in hotels they have this telephone because this is a telecommunication device which is used to receive calls or even 
um, call the guests once they want to have clarifications. It is a sort of media wherein they can give information to the hotel even outside or inside the hotel premises. Because there are some instances that in different rooms where the guests are being accommodated, they want to they want to call the front desk for additional help for let's say for example they want to order coffee, they want to eat on their room, they wanted to have additional toiletries. So they are using their telephones. The next one is Yes, it looks like a printer. It looks like a copier. It's a fax machine or sometimes it's called PABX or Private Automatic Branch Exchange. Why exchange? Because this is an automatic telephone switching system within private enterprise. This is where they put the hard copy of a certain information and then they want to send it to another office. They just use this fax machine. Although we can take a photo of it and then send it to them via messenger, this establishment like hotel industries, they do have the fax machine wherein they fax important documents. That's why it's called private automatic branch exchange because it's for private purposes and most of the time these are important documents that they do exchange off. And again, it's a fax machine and not a printer. Next, looks familiar? Yes, we commonly see this on supermarket, on department stores, and even on food chains or restaurant. And this is what we call as cash register or accounting post machine. This is a mechanical or electronic device for calculating and recording sales transactions and attached there is a cash drawer for storing cash. That's why we commonly see that even in supermarket because once they punch toot, toot, and then it automatically print the receipt, we can automatically see the prices, we can see the, the, uh, the amount of the goods that we bought and then it automatically break out once we are paying it auto automatically bring out the cash drawer below it and that's what we call cash register take note of that the next one okay we can also see this just beside the cash register and this is what we call it's a credit card printer or magnetic strip recorder and this short strip of magnetic tape is attached to a credit card or a debit card so that we can pay even though we do not have cash but we have our ATM cards, we have our credit cards. It contains information wherein we just put it there and then automatically in just a snap we're already paid. And that is a credit card and printer or magnetic strip record. <laughs> Before we proceed to our paraphernalias, let us again recap the front office services equipment starting with Yes, computer Second, printer Third, telephone Fourth, fax machine Fifth, cash register And the sixth one is the credit card imprinter or magnetic strip recorder. Very good. Let's go with the last one, which is the paraphernalia. Next one that we will be dealing on is the front office services paraphernalia. It's starting with the first one. It's a reservation form. And from the word itself, this reservation form is a type of form being filled out by a reservation assistant at the time of the request of the room from the guest. It can be made through or via phone call, via message, 
via messenger, via video calls, or via postmail. So this is what we call as the reservation form. The second one, after finally completing the reservation form, is what we call as the reservation slip. And this reservation slip, from the word slip, is just a piece of paper which is filled up as well by the reservation assistant once he's finished with the reservation form. The third one is, I think everybody's familiar with this because we are actually using this even in normal times and that is what we call this. Yes, it's a calculator. And a calculator is an electronic device that we use when we are making calculations. So what's the use of this in hotel? Once they want to give an estimate of the room reservation fee, an estimate of a potential bill that will be paid by the customer, and that is the time we're in. We have to use calculator if that's um, if that's requiring too much numbers or too many numbers so that we will be sure and we will be guided once we are giving them um, estimated amount. And that's the use of a calculator. The fourth one is what we call it as it's a cash receipt. Yes. Cash receipt serves as a document, serves as a proof that a payment has been already made. That's why always remember to get your receipt once you paid for something, not only in hotels. Again, our fourth paraphernalia is a cash receipt. The fifth one is something that we put it on a folio tray and that is a guest folio. This guest folio is a record of the transactions made by an individual or independent guest within the hotel. Just like what I've said a while ago, this folio serves as references for the hotel once you are a regular customer, a regular guest, and it will be easier for the attendees or the hotel to monitor or to track information because you already have the folio. In school, you have your portfolio where we can see the records, the outputs, and we can see your performance. In hotel, they have what we call as guest folio. Next one is, yes, it's a logbook. And this is used by the front desk to record or even report the things in the parts of the hotel that needs maintenance in the department. Again, it's a very good. It's a logbook. The seventh one is it's not an ID. It's not an ATM card. It's a key, but in the form of card. That's why it's called a key card. A key card is a small plastic card that is being used to open doors in the hotels instead of using key to open it. Can you see how high-tech hotels nowadays? Did you want to have one in your house or in your home? Maybe it's just too costly. Okay, so again we have a key card. And that's not an ATM card, remember, it's a key card. It's a key in the form of a card, which we use to open our doors where we are being accommodated in the hotel. Again, let us recap the paraphernalia that are being used in front office services. We have reservation form. Reservation slip, calculator, cash receipt, guest folio, log book, and key cards. Were you able to stay 
repeat them all correctly? Let us proceed. You know what, students, after knowing all of those front office tools, equipment, and paraphernalia, we should also remember that it is very important not only to know their functions, but as well as how to clean and keep them properly. We have to take note that regular inspection and checking must always be done in order for us to have a smoother flow of work and a smoother flow of service in the workplace where we are working on. And this is where preventive maintenance goes on. Preventive maintenance is actually necessary to avoid work delays, interruptions or interrupted jobs, poor services, and even workplace accidents. Tools and equipment that are not properly functioning should be repaired and those tools that are already defective and worn out should be disposed immediately because it may cause bigger problems. And when we are talking about prevent preventive maintenance, it includes inspecting and checking. And that includes, number one, machine temperature. We are checking machine temperature to avoid overheating. And we already know that once it overheat, it may explode, it may cause fire, which is dangerous to the people who are working in the establishment and as well as to the guests who are being accommodated in the hotel. The second one is hydraulic fluid. Talking about hydraulic fluid, this must be checked and must be guaranteed that the equipment or machines operated by water, which is very important to the guests and to the people being accommodated in the hotel, or other liquids moving pipes and the pressure that is um, on the pipes are functioning well. And that is what we call hydraulic fluid. And that's very important once we are um, checking in in the hotel because water is everything. It is our life. The third one is to wear and surface conditions. Actually, this is a daily maintenance routine that should be done to check and to see if no machines are being defective, if there are no equipment that are deteriorating to ensure the smooth flow of the workplace and to ensure that not, no accident or no harm will be happening. The fourth one is the crack. So actually, crack can be visibly or vividly seen by our eyes. And this is part of the maintenance wherein you will be checking if there are no cracks, there will be no source of um, fall or things that might fall in the hotel and as well as on the machines and equipments that are being used. And again, that is crack. The fifth preventive maintenance is leak detection. So it is very important to see if there are leaks in gas, in water or in oil or in any other machine because leak actually connotes accident. It actually gives an impression that something is wrong with the machine, something is wrong with the pipes. And you have to really check on it and you have to make sure that there is no leak. That's why it's called leak detection. The next one is vibration. So you have to check if it's not moving or there is or there is no vibration, there is no sudden movement that is happening on the equipment once it is being used because just like link vibration is also connoting or vibration is also um, something that tells that there is something wrong with the equipment and that is vibration. Next is corrosion. Corrosion is used to check in order to minimize wear or tear parts which is being done by washing, drying, and even putting or lubricating them with oil. Corrosion is something that is happening.
happen especially to the equipment that has metal parts or it has met or made up of metals most of the time these are the uh, things that are being affected by corrosion that's why frequent maintenance and checking of them cleaning them and drying them and putting lubricating oil is essential in order for them to work um, smoothly and to do their functions better next is electric insulations I believe all of us are really afraid of electric shocks you might as well is afraid of that and that can be caused if there are live wires and it is not being checked that's why it's part of preven preventive maintenance because if there are live wires it may cause electric shocks it may cause accidents to the person who are operating the machine and might as well it may cause accidents to the people who are just near the equipment while it is being turned on or while it is operating and that is something that is really um something that is really hard when it happens and something that is everyone should be careful take a ship everyone should be uh, aware of and aside from the preventive maintenance it is really important to properly store our equipment paraphernalias and tools that are used in front office services because just like what I've said we are dealing with people we are dealing with guests and it's important that we should not only take care of ourselves should not only take care of these tools but as well as taking care of these tools means we are taking care of our guests and we also have here the importance of how to properly store this equipment and paraphernalia. Proper storing of tools, equipment, and paraphernalia in front office services is important because of one, it is important in maintaining health and safety and as well as the flow or smooth flow of the business. Two, it enhances and reflects an organized workplace. Three, it lowers maintenance expenses. And four, it guarantees the safe use of tools and equipment. At this juncture, let us have the helpful guide in storing tools and equipment. One, secure a designated place for tools, equipment, and paraphernalia. Two, Organize by putting label on your storing cabinet. Three, store them near the workplace. Four, clean and dry before storing. And before we finally conclude our discussion for this day's episode, always remember that at the end of the day, our goal is simple. Safety and security. At this juncture, let us test if you are ready for the activities by simply answering the questions that I will be raising, which serves as the guide questions a while ago. Let's see. First question What are the tools, equipment, and paraphernalia in front office services? Can you name some? How about their functions? Very good. How about why do maintaining tools, equipment, and paraphernalia important? Very nice. How about what includes the preventive maintenance activity? equipment and paraphernalia. And finally, what are the helpful guides 
besides installing tools and equipment. Were you able to answer all my questions correctly? Wow, that's great! If that's so, let us now proceed to the most exciting part of our lesson, which is... Activity time! But before you finally proceed to answering the activities that are written on your module, you may also try another challenging brain exercise which could serve as a sort of a review on the topics that we have discussed on this episode through the Kahoot application where I have posted the interactive game that you may play together with your classmates. The link is actually posted on the description box below and all you have to do is just to click it and play it. Good luck! Additional reminder on the use of your answer sheet as you start answering and writing your answers on it, do not forget to fill out the spaces allotted for your name, your section, and also don't forget to affix your parents' signature as a sign that it was checked by your parents. For independent activity number one, name the following tools that are being shown on your answer sheet. For independent assessment, number one, identify the tools that are being described. And that can be found on page 8 of your module. Next is on page 9. For independent activity number two, match each equipment in column A with its functions or descriptions in column B. Simply write the letter of your answer on your answer sheet. Also on page 9, independent assessment number 2. It's a multiple choice. Choose the letter of the correct answer and write it on your answer sheet. Independent activity number 3. Identify the following paraphernalia that is being described. And then, for independent assessment number 3, true or false. Write true if the statement is correct and false if it is incorrect. Next is on page 10 of your module. Independent activity number four. Match each maintenance terminologies in column A with its meaning in column B. Independent assessment number four. Simply identify the words that are being described. Also in page 10, are the what I have learned and what I can do activities. For what I have learned, simply fill in the blanks with the correct or missing words that would complete the statement about front office services. For what I can do, draw and label five of each type of the front office services tools, equipment, and paraphernalia and give their functions. You may use additional sheet of paper and just attach it on your answer sheet. Next is the assessment, which is divided into two parts. The first part is a multiple choice type of questions. So all you have to do is just to simply write the letter of your answer on your answer sheet. Part 2 is identifying picture. So just write the name of the tools or equipment that is being shown on the picture. The last part is the additional activities. Part 1, write the major functions of the front office department. Part 2, Make a compilation of the different front office tools and equipment. You may put it on a bond paper and attach it on your answer sheet. If you have questions and clarifications, don't forget to message me via phone call via text message, or even via messenger. Again, this is your TLE teacher, Teacher Jin Rose Girovano, saying thank you, God bless, and hope to 
see you again in our next episode. Good luck!